Welcome to the Chris Spangle Show. My name is Chris Spangle, and uh, I'm excited to have the conversation today. Uh, my guest and I are probably on the opposite sides of several things, but we're both libertarians and we both love liberty. We can get along and have a conversation, and that's the way that the world is supposed to work, but that's not seemingly how it's supposed to work on social media, as you'll hear. And I have to apologize to Dan Smots. I've been saying Smotes for roughly right. five years now. He's the host of the System Is Down podcast, T S I D P O D dot com. So think T-S-I-D-P-O-D. like that. T S I D P O D dot com. Right. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, I apologize for mispronouncing your name for the entirety of our friendship. <laughs> as long as you're saying my name, that's really all that I care about. Like you can call me whatever you want. As long as you're talking about me, that's that's fine. <laughs> that's okay <laughs> so why don't you tell people a little bit about your podcast what do you what do you do over there on the system is down sure yeah we've had our podcast going for i think about four years now and basically the whole premise of the show is just discuss it having conversations with people about uncomfortable topics talking primarily to people that we disagree with on things and exploring the world why people believe the way they do why they come to certain conclusions because i believe and i'm starting to wonder if, if i'm if i'm you know, right about this, but I believe that the person that you're arguing with on the internet is not like your enemy. I think they're just a different set of variables that grew up in a different set of variables and came to different conclusions than you. So seeking truth together, uh, and we explore controversial topics like conspiracies, politics, religion, and as I put it, all the things your family prays you don't bring up around the Thanksgiving dinner table, and in just an effort to find truth and figure out what is and uh, why people believe the, the way they do and unite around our, our commonalities despite our differences. So you hear right away that those of you who listen to this program, we approach things exactly the same. We may come to totally different conclusions. Um, You just said something really interesting that that I've been struggling with a lot in the last year, really, which is I I tend to think the same way. Like people grow up in, in different situations. You need to understand where they come from. You have those conversations. But the person on the other side of the screen is probably a reasonable people that is loved by friends and family, is Mm -hmm. a decent person. Uh, But it's getting harder and harder to hold on to that. I mean, you know, I've I've always considered myself fairly close to anarchism, but like Mm -hmm. it's been shaken a little bit lately. And then you watch what happened at the Capitol, which we can agree or disagree on that uh, later in the program. But like you watch the writing of, of both sides over the summer and people's just knee jerk, violent tendencies. And you go, am I arguing with decent people? I mean, how did you come to that conclusion? Yeah, it, it, this entire year has been this crazy roller coaster of ups and downs where um, I feel like a lot of people, and I, I'm willing to admit if I am wrong on something, if I'm definitively proven wrong, that I have no problem with that. But there are some people and it seems to be growing in numbers who are either completely stupid or they're lying. And uh, I, I'm having a hard time figuring out which is which, because if you show somebody evidence of something over and over again, and I'm not even talking about any particular topic, but uh, you know, with all these controversial topics that have been going on throughout the summer um, and up to now, it's been like, like just having a conversation about something is enough to trigger people into these flame wars and they make assumptions about you and everything like that. It's like, I have a hard time believing that you are even trying to understand the words that are coming out of my mouth. Like, why am I spending my time uh, trying to have a conversation with somebody who insists on misrepresenting and misunderstanding me? I, I, that's where I, I, it kind of, the theory that these are all just decent human beings kind of breaks down. It's like, are you trying to figure me out? Like I'm trying to do with you. Are you trying to have a civil dialogue or are you just, lying to yourself so that you can, uh, I don't know, get social points online. It feels, I I know, I don't even know if it's online. I mean, it's in my life too. I mean, it's, it's getting harder and harder to disagree with people. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, what are you experiencing when you're having those, because like you'd argue with people online, let's say two years ago, and then you'd meet them and they were great people. Like I literally have a friend who my audience knows went to a bar last night to beat someone up because they called the guy called his mom fat on Facebook. And he said, meet me at this bar. I'm going to fight you. They both show up. They ended up having drinks 
and the person that one of the friends that showed up as backup was a guest that we had on the program recently. <laughs> like they like so the two of my friends were on opposite sides on the internet showing up to beat each other up. But then when they got there, they had friends. Like that happened all the time. That should show now, you what social media is doing. Everybody's this big right. talking douchebag online. And then they get together and they're like, oh yeah, I remember you. You're pretty cool. Let's, let's, you want to drink? We'll beat each other up after this. And then it never happens. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think it is? What, what is it about social media that is causing this level of discord between people? I think there's definitely, uh, and you can call it a conspiracy theory if you want, but I think it goes without saying at this point that there is a um, divide and conquer tactic that is going on within the media. Like everything has to be, and it might, I mean, you can say it's a conspiracy theory, whatever you can say. It's, you know, it's just the, what numbers are and uh, they're just doing it for clicks. But uh, the extreme polarization of the media, the extreme polarization of politics in general, every single topic that has come up uh, has been used to divide us and it's because we can't because of social media there's zero nuance in the world in my opinion like you can't have a you can't be anti-trump and not be a biden supporter you can't be anti-biden and not be a trump supporter and as you and i would both agree you you certainly can but uh yeah. I, I just i don't know like there's also the um you know presenting your your most polished self that I, i've been warning against for like two years at least, where these kids are getting online, they're seeing all their friends posting the only the best, most perfectly edited version of their life. And we're looking around, seeing everybody else have this super happy, glowy, fun time. And uh, deep inside, we realize, or we know deep down that we're not the thing that we're posting online. We're actually, uh, many of us, sad, depressed human beings because we're seeing everybody else only show their best as well. And it's just this dishonest, a uh, mask that everybody's wearing that social media encourages and uh, it's it's toxic and it's addictive. I totally agree with you. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I never like to assign uh, nefarious motives. Like when I'm thinking about like the building of Facebook and the building of all that, I never try to assign nefarious motives when stupidity or greed will do. But at this point, it seems very obvious to all of us that we're all like, cocaine addicted monkeys pressing yes. this rectangle of misery all day long. I mean, I, I just find myself at certain points in my day going, why am I so sad and pushing this button when I could be reading a book or having right. a conversation with my girlfriend? Like, what, what am I doing? Yeah. And I, I struggle so hard to, to uh, live out my values because of this little rectangle. Mark Blythe is this economist who said, you know, he's Scottish and he's like, it's like everybody's at a blow party. And when you're addicted to blow, you get violent and angry. And it's like, everybody's at this blow party that ran out two hours ago and now they're turning on each other. And, yes. and it was a great analogy because it's just, it's addicting. And so at this point, what do we do with that? Because it, it's, do I, do I just, you know, my business, like your businesses are online yeah. The broadcaster, these are incredible tools. They've given you and I both a voice. Yeah. So what do we do with it now that we know what it is and how how awful that is for our society? Yeah. Well, I'm getting uh, I had the rug pulled out from under me and uh, it's kind of opened my eyes to prioritize what I what actually my purpose is, what actually I'm trying to do. Am I just trying to get clicks and likes and followers or am I trying to actually push a message of the message that I you know, profess on my show. And if I'm trying to do that, then why am I wasting my time building somebody else's platform? Uh, I, I tirade to basically try and push for people to just buck the whole system and start. I, I'm not saying like you have to start your own website or something, but figure out different means, figure out what you're on the social media for. If it's just to communicate with people, even if it's just a shit post, there's better ways of doing it than uh, go, you know, going back into the cesspool um, and just pushing more prioritizing and independence, just figuring out the best ways to uh, own everything that you do and make sure that, you know, somebody can't pull the rug out from under you and, you know, flatten your business within a 24 hour span. Because that's what happened to you, right? Yes. Yeah. And, you know, I, it's early to tell, I don't want it to be like, 
oh, we're, we're financially destitute, but it's certainly going to, in the long run, affect our, our businesses and our ability to make a living. Because for me, I lost uh, not just my personal account, but the podcast account. I lost all my business accounts, which I had like 15 to 20 business pages and music pages, different projects and things that were all, I mean, the, the life of an entrepreneur, spread it out there and a little bit trickles in here and a little bit trickles in there. Some of those probably won't even come back in any capacity. But um, if for my wife more so, she got uh, she got wiped out as well. She was just an admin on the page. She didn't do things that were like overly co- controversial or anything like that, like the podcast. She was involved in the podcast a little bit, so she was an admin, but um, she did very little on it. She did nothing controversial on her own stuff, but her personal page got taken down and her business page as well. And she needs a Facebook account to do her daily job. Like she works at a school doing uh, PR and communications and she has to have a Facebook account to be able to, you know, follow that stuff. And uh, hers got taken down and it wouldn't even let her sign up for a new one. For me, I had uh, an old one that I dug back up. So um, I don't, I don't even know if it would let me create a new one at this point, but she ended up having to, you know, find her sister's old Facebook account, log back into that and just not add anybody like that's the the value of Facebook now is you have to kick and scream and beg to uh, communicate basically. Did uh, I mean, did it cause her any problems at work? I mean, like, yeah. did, did like that embarrassing conversation of I've been banned from Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she couldn't get a, like she it took her about a week to come up with a an alternative. We tried different VPNs. We tried. Uh, using different browsers and stuff like that for her to sign up and none of it would work. I don't know why really? I'm not a, I'm not a technological guy. If somebody has got a clue. I don't know what caused it, but yeah, I wasn't letting her back in at all for about a week. And so even her school was like trying to help her out, trying to figure out a way around it. So. See, that's amazing that they like you, because I thought about that. Like I was like, Oh, when I talk to Dan, I want to mention like VPNs, maybe that'll work. And that didn't work either. Wow. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, we've seen this with the the Liberty memes guys. I mean, for years they've had to, to have multiple different weird accounts, and you know, they're trying they're raising a million dollars in charity, and they can't use Facebook to to really right. function. Um, yeah, and it's it's also like the the contacts and stuff. Like, I don't even know what I'm missing now. I don't even know right. what I lost because I wasn't writing everything down or backing things up like I should have. And admittedly, I put too many eggs in one basket. Obviously. Uh, that was a vulnerable basket. And, but I, I always thought, you know, if they do something, if they took down just the system is down page, I would have been like, ah, well, okay, what do you do? Like we did talk about some, some controversial topics, but these are controversial topics that we've been talking about for years without issue. Um, And then all of a sudden it's gone, but it wasn't just that it was like, you know, I, I primarily, I film weddings for a living and I, I now film like political videos and stuff like I did for, Joe Jorgensen's campaign, Vermin Supreme's campaign, Spike Cohen, and all that. But um, yeah, it's like I, I've had people hit me up over the years, and I don't even remember their names. I, I can't just go back and like dig them back up because I, you know, I don't have that information anymore. I'm talking to Dan Smots, who is the host of the System Is Down podcast. Well, how can people uh, help you? I mean, if you've got other means like an email newsletter or a website, like let's give a list of things that people can. You know, if you're listening, go go listen to the system is down. Subscribe to it. What are some other ways that people can get in touch with you and just kind of help you build some of this stuff back up? Sure. The primary thing right now for the podcast, at least, is I'm working on a social media, a small so- social media site of my own, where uh, you know, like-minded individuals. By like-minded, I just mean open-minded and civil individuals can come and hang out. Um, we're putting that up and we've got a newsletter that we just put up, you know, a day too late, but, uh, but I I created that a day after the banning and uh, they can find that at tsidpod.com. That's where I'm going to be putting out links to different, you know, I don't know, edgy, controversial news topics and stuff like that. Going to be putting out, uh, all the announcements for the website that's coming up for the social media and, uh, find the, uh, the, video side of things the video work that i do at goulashfilms.com that's g-o-u-l-a-s-h films.com or the graphic design and audio stuff that i do at goulashmedia.net and you did our ma Rhodes t-shirt which is our best-selling t-shirt you're a great graphic designer i know you work with the lions of liberty guys um so if you're looking for a graphic designer then then hit dan up at goulashmedia goulashmedia.com 
uh, net for goulash .net. media okay yep. and i'll put all the links in the show notes so people don't have to remember that stuff sure um so so let's get into what you were posting uh so like what what you know i i think when it comes down to like I mean, let's talk about conspiracies i don't i don't mm -hmm. think that i think we maybe had talked about it when i was on your show i'm pretty much on the opposite side of a lot of this stuff than you sure. which is not you know, I don't care. Uh, you know, I'm, sure. I know that you're an intelligent person who has reasons why you come up with the, the conclusions that you do. You know, what what kind of stuff were you posting that got you banned, first of all? Like, what, what was the edgy stuff? Do you know what actually got you taken down? I wish I could tell you exactly, but they did not give me any warning, any notice. They didn't send me any follow-up email or any chance to appeal. No explanation, nothing. Um, I can certainly guess what it was. And how much do you want me to speak in code on this? I don't want to no, just be just either. be flat out honest. I don't, I, you know, our audience. Like the, the name of the topic. The name of the topic is what got me kicked is why I ask. What, Q stuff? The, the 17th. Yes, yes. Yeah, I don't know. The, go okay. ahead. I don't care. <laughs> just no. making sure. Just making sure. But no, uh, we're not, yeah, the, I mean, the, the only thing I don't want done here is like screaming the N word. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if well you then wanna, I'll, I'll keep that uh, it, to a minimum. <laughs> here's the thing, okay? Like, let's say I, I think you like. Let's say you believe in Q, QAnon and all that kind of stuff. Our audience wants to understand why you think that way. Like, sure. it, it, it's like what I what I really like with the Trump stuff, for instance, with with the person who's running into the Capitol. I want to understand why they made that choice because right. I don't think somebody who runs into the Capitol right is a it, it, they're acting rationally from their point of view. So I want to understand like what, how do we get to that point? Why do you think that, you know, so like whatever radical thing that you may think sure. my audience might think is nuts, they're, they can <laughs> yeah. handle it. I'm not, I'm not concerned about what they think. I, I was just more concerned about. No, you, you, so, have car, you have uh, carte blanche, carte blanche. Perfect. Well then, yeah, it's Q and F and uh, this may come as a surprise, but I don't believe it. And that's some of the craziest part about it's craziest shit about this is that uh, I, I've been pretty like I've been on the fence about the idea the entire time, because from the for those that don't know, and it's it's striking to me how many people I run into who don't even know anything about this theory or what it is um, the, like it's been called, you know, white supremacist, blah, blah, blah. I like not from my experience. Sure, there might be some of those in it, I guess. I don't know. I haven't seen them, uh, whatever. But. The theory is this crazy outlandish idea that Donald Trump got elected and now he's trying to do everything that he said he was going to do. Like, that's pretty much the extent of the theory is that Donald Trump's trying to drain the swamp and Donald Trump's leaking out information to help people be reassured that he's going to drain the swamp and lock them up and blah, blah, blah. That's pretty much all it is. Uh, which I don't think is that crazy or outlandish of a theory. I don't necessarily believe it because I don't think I, even as a conspiracy guy, as like, it, I, I don't think that the election process is controlled by us necessarily. Anyway, uh, I think the whole thing's probably rigged and Donald Trump's just there to divide us more, but that's a different conspiracy theory altogether. Yeah. You look at um, like the, the Q stuff. Like, I don't know if you saw the video of Alex Jones, like screaming about you yes. QAnon people are driving me crazy. Uh, you know, the, <laughs> You know, some of this stuff has just gotten to a point, and maybe for those who don't understand QAnon, and, and, and like, I try to post stuff like, okay, here's what people think. Here's why people think the Q stuff or, or what, right? And so I posted right. this video of uh, the MAGA preview, which would look like an ISIS recruiting video for the 20th. <laughs> and it got taken down by YouTube. And I yep. appealed to the decision, and I said, I'm doing this as news. Like, I'm trying to explain to people... Right. So they have great. When you posted that, I commented on it and said, "That seems like a good theory. Sure, would be a shame if somebody banned you for it." Right. And then the next day, it's gone. <laughs> I was like, "That's yeah, the yeah. that's the crazy that's thing at. about all of this is that what I would what I try to do is to say, here's what people think. Yes, it's crazy. There are some people who react to it and make it in fun of it and mock it, yeah. but the majority of my audience goes, "All right, I want to know for greater empathy." what yeah. that person thinks because i want to understand how do they what are they what are they doing like why would I mean, you and i know uh the the types of people that are talking about armed insurrection like we know understand right. their psychology intimately because we've been in this group for 10 years or more you know in my case i don't know about you but like 
I, I understand why people go the last option is violence and other people I think need to understand that too for various reasons. Sure. And social media is no longer allowing us to report on that, which is the stupid part. Right, exactly. It's the same as like the uh, Elliot slash Ellen Page debacle. It's like, <laughs> if we can't say her old name, then what even is the conversation? Somebody right. that you don't know transitioned to be somebody that you don't know. Okay, whatever. It's like, if we can't actually just say what is or explore different things, then that our limit to like our limits on what we can can and can't report are it, it's just it's impossible to even report on the news at this point and with the the q stuff um i had a show on my channel still kind of technically do he just hasn't done anything in a while the guy who i had on the show to interview is a really good friend of mine who believes this stuff wholeheartedly and i'm like okay cool he's not like a radical extremist or anything he just it when the whole q thing began it was to me, I looked at it as, oh, another fun conspiracy theory to dig into. And it's current and relevant. And it's like, you know, it's like national treasure. <laughs> and <laughs> right. I, I don't have time to dig into it, but I would love to have somebody who's, you know, autistic enough to do the digging themselves, dig into it. And then they can tell me what they found. And if they convince me, great. If not, whatever, we can agree to disagree. And he never convinced me. And, uh, but we had that show called QAnon Chronicles on our podcast for about a year. And that was all leading up to this, like never got a strike on a single one of his episodes. He wasn't controversial or anything outside of talking about a crazy conspiracy theory, but um, never got in trouble for anything he posted that was directly focused on that. But then I had him, he was gone for about a month. I had him on the show on the fifth. So the day before all this went down, I wanted to have him on right like leading up to that uh, just to be like hey can we get a follow-up on this do you still think do you still buy it do you still move the goalposts so donald trump is going to be our savior he's like yes and uh whatever so we had a nice lovely conversation but uh, you know if we disagree with like if i agree with facebook facebook says QAnon is stupid and i'm like yeah i kind of agree now let's talk about it and they're like nope you're gone everything 10 years that you've poured into our platform we're going to wipe it out because you had a conversation with a guy that you know about a topic that CNN can get away with talking about, but you can't. Yeah, like I, I, I know I'm eventually will be gone too, and I, on the libertarian world, am, am probably closer to. You know, I I read the New York Times and think that most of the time they're trying to tell the truth. Sure. Uh, so there's no there's no chance that I'm sticking around because when you talk to people about this stuff and try to understand them, they don't want that. They want politics off of their platform completely. Right. You know. I mean, how many millions of dollars has Donald Trump given to Facebook? Yep. And that didn't matter at all. And the problem, it, it, and maybe you can elaborate on this, the problem when you censor stuff, like if your goal is to get rid of the Alex Jones mindset, looking back in hindsight, after two years of him being gone off of all these platforms in a day, is the mm -hmm. Alex Jones mindset more or less prevalent after removing him from these platforms? In my mind, it's way more prevalent and it backfired on the people who wanted to censor him to make themselves feel comfortable. Yes, yeah, so this is just how you make radicals and you make people who are further steeped in their ideas, whether they're good ideas or bad ideas, doesn't matter. Uh, if you tell somebody you cannot look into this, you cannot think about this, you cannot talk about this, what are they going to do? They're just going to go look into it more. Like it barely affected Alex Jones. Of course, I didn't have Alex Jones size platform or Alex Jones size insanity, in my opinion. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Alex uh, size Jones drinking problem. What about that? Huh? As I do not have Alex Jones size alcoholism either or uh, spousal <laughs> abuse. Kel Kelsey Jones has been on my podcast or Kelly Jones, his wife, ex-wife. She's been oh, on my wow. Show. Okay. So come check that out. But anyway, uh, <laughs> Not, not to slander. These are all jokes, guys. Um, anyway. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly, yes. Um, wh what were we talking about? Uh, no, 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 that, that, that censorship prohibition that these, these impulses to right. control backfire on the people who try to control. Yeah, it's like the drug war. How well has that worked to keep us from having drugs? It just makes drugs more dangerous. Or you could even liken it to, I don't know, I, I kind of feel like going back to conspiracy land here a little bit but uh this whole I, I said that i thought you know all the elections were kind of planned like if you wanted to divide a country what better way than to have smooth suave subtly destroying brown people uh barack obama in there um 
for eight years and then bring in big brash dumb uh donald trump um it's almost like in every single presidency we've got a boogeyman that we're fighting and they're always overseas to try and get us into wars to try and convince us hey we got to go over there and spend our money in all our focus and effort and energy on taking out the boogeyman this time it, he was just at home and it's working really well to get us into a war right now and it's creating radicalized people who have bad ideas and we're just pushing them off into the dark corners of the internet where they fester and you know dwell on their bad ideas and assume like it's kind of like waco you know you you tell them that they get whatever you got they got to stop doing what they're doing or you're going to come in and wipe them out they've been predicting that you were going to wipe them out the whole time so you're just furthering their paranoia and confirming everything that they believed by you know attacking them with the atf yeah, uh, and you push them into silos, these digital yeah. silos, or some people like Glenn Beck call it a digital ghetto, which causes all kinds of outrage. Yeah, um, But it is true, once you put these people into digital silos, the people that you need to worry about on the 20th are not the people that you see on Facebook. Like, I, people need to be very clear about who they're mad at. Like, it's mm -hmm. not your uncle who's spouting QAnon nonsense. Yeah, there's some some problems with him and enablement and some of that stuff. But like the reality is the person that's dangerous is not on Facebook anymore. They were banned five, 10 years ago. They've yeah. been on encrypted services for 10 years in, in a channel of like five other people. And they've just been radicalizing and ex going to extremes and they're not being checked. Like, that's right. the thing, like being checked by other people going, you're kind of out of the bounds of reality. Right. Or and then people pushing back and go, well, here's my reality. Here's why I think this. That conversation brings people to an agreement that tempers the extremism, mm -hmm. and everything that the digital censors are doing is just radicalizing people even more in greater numbers and puts us yeah. in even more danger. Absolutely, and it's you know they can't if they're kicked off these platforms like I was, and if you can't get back in like my wife was, if my wife was this crazy right wing extremist, she's not, she's not, I promise. Uh, like she can't even get back on the platform to find out how she's wrong. She can't even look at other people saying how she's wrong. Like she has no, nothing but her confirmation bias and everything that she's going to get from, I don't know, I'm using my wife as an example. Let's say Alex Jones, um, even like he can't even come back in and go, Hey, that's, you know, that, that doesn't make sense about the Q thing. Like we're pushing them out of the information even because we're talking about not just some little, you know, social media platform. We're talking about the largest communication means that this world has ever seen. Like this doesn't even compare to phones at this point as much as we use it. So uh, I think that people should be allowed to be stupid. And I think they should be allowed to be stupid in public so that they can be informed on how they're stupid. I think that's the only way they find out. All right, so let me counter back it is their property. We believe in property rights. It yep. is their house. I don't want you plotting a violent insurrection in my home. I mean, so <laughs> not what, again, we tried that once. I know. Right. <laughs> um, you know, so where are the bounds between free speech and property rights? I mean, do you want child porn on Facebook? Like don't, don't they have a right to censor things? I mean, where's the line for you? How does that work in your world? Well, I'm not a legal expert, but I also try to not be a hypocrite and I'm not calling for like, hey, we need more government inter intervention uh, to tell them what they can and can't do. I think that we need less government intervention coming in and protecting them when there is, you know, this stuff that's uh, like if they're going to take a stand on this is what we believe and this is all that you're allowed to believe, then you're not a platform like this is this is less about. Like I, I would say it's less akin to the cake baking than it is to book burning. Like we're talking about uh, these small handful of people that run the entire flow of information saying, you're not allowed to think this way anymore. If you think this way, you will be demonized, you will be punished and you will be uh, taken out of uh, all communication means. Yeah, I mean, the so part of me goes back and forth on that because like, but the media, but the left, yep. uh, the, they're, you know, there's, there's people in our movement that run around saying they're going to line you up against the wall and shoot you. Like the, there, it, there is a paranoia about a lot of this stuff that kind of leads people down a radical path that I don't, when you talk to like your average Democrat, they're not 
they don't want to kill people. You know, sure. like they they want different outcomes. Every, de- want- every Democrat I've ever met has been a murderer. They just, <laughs> right. just don't know yet. <laughs> right. Like it, it sort of goes back to what we were talking about at the beginning. Like if if a lot of these people like went and worked on a campaign and got to know other Democrats, like I've met Mike Pence a bunch of times. I think Mike Pence couldn't be more wrong sure. about most things. But like the guy is not an evil person. Right. He just he has a set of reasons why he thinks what he does. And he's an opportunist. Right. So but he's like. So so where's that line between I'm because I'm struggling with this. I'm asking more for myself. Like. When you look back at the end result of the like the disconnection between these two cultures where we're not reading the same things you and I probably read two different sets of information. Uh, and then we end up at different conclusions as a result. And, sure. and it's hard. If I send you an article, I know because of the way that you are, you're going to go, okay, I'll entertain this idea and process it. But when you send somebody like, let's say the, the, like the business insider and they go <laughs> business insider, <laughs> you, you just go, well, I don't know what to do with you because like, I want you to see what I'm seeing. Like, how do we reconcile that? Like, I feel like that we've we've kind of enabled some of this sloppy anti-intellectualism that has caused some of this in the libertarian movement. And I don't know how to get get to a place where it's like you're anti-state because I, I, am I making any sense? Like, I don't know if yeah. you had any of or, or where you're at. Yeah, I mean... It all comes back to the social media thing. Like you have to be able to have face-to-face human interactions. Like we've gotten so dehumanized because of social media where it's just, you know, 140 characters and you've got your pretty picture and that's who you are. And that defines you. Um, the, not the like sub context of your, your argument or anything like that, or your history or anything, any evidence doesn't matter. You're just immediately, you, you are one thing. Um, and even like even at the beginning of my podcast in doing in talking about these uncomfortable topics, I always whenever I could, I insisted on doing um, face to face conversations. And I, I'm, I'm a pretty introverted guy, actually. But uh, I was like, if I'm going to be doing this, I have to know their body language. I have to see their eyes. I have to know like how they're feeling. Otherwise, it, it, the whole thing collapses if I misinterpret, uh, you know, the way that the way they're speaking or something like that, like the art of conversation is so incredibly dead today. Like if you're not doing like what we're doing right now, if you're just going on Twitter and that's your human interaction, then you're not even interacting with humans. And we're all just, it's like we're hacking into this crappy shitty matrix and the person on the other end is also hacking into that. And in there, the world looks really ugly. So we just fight and bicker about it instead of like looking out our window and seeing that everything's pretty much fine how much has donald trump actually affected your life in the last four years personally Dude, i've never had a better year than last year like right, every, everything's on fire if you if you go on the rectangle of doom but right. like my personal life has never been better how I, I mean how damaging do you think the lockdowns and just the pandemic have been to social interaction and how hard will it be for us to climb out of the hole after you know now that we're starting to i mean i think once we get to the summertime people are going to go out more there's time is up people are done with it it doesn't yeah. matter what the the consequences are uh people are ready to to go to concerts and live life again mm-hmm. how how and i just think that part of the civil unrest that we've had you cannot lock people down you cannot have this the economic consequences of this yeah. and not have civil unrest like I said, at March 21st, and mm-hmm. I didn't predict George Floyd, but I did predict people storming state capitals. Like, I mean, how damaging do you think the pandemic and the lockdowns have been to this for, for the social interaction? Extremely. And if you catch me on a conspiracy brain day, I'd say it's not an accident. Um, <laughs> like you lock everybody down for, oh, just two weeks to flatten the curve, then two months. And then what, what I don't know, two years. Is that when we'll be done with this? I, I suspect, you know, once Biden's in there, they'll be like, yeah, we don't need to worry about that much anymore. Even Cuomo is kind of like rolling back uh, his lockdown talk and his scare tactics and uh, Lightfoot, I, I believe. I literally was thought like I literally thought it was a libertarian podcaster that tweeted out. We, we cannot lock down forever. And I was like, oh, it's John Odermatt again. And then I looked at <laughs> it, it was like, oh, no, it's it's Andrew Cuomo. 
I, where do you get off, man? You, you've made a living off this shit for the last year and you're going to act like you're the arbiter of, hey, the lockdowns are evil now. It, it, again, are you that stupid or are you lying? Because I spe- suspect that uh, it's the latter of the two. Yeah. And yeah, the, the lockdowns have been extremely damaging because, um, you know, the, the stuff that we're talking about with just limiting your ability to communicate to online we're pretty much only doing that now like we're we we're not we're stressed and depressed and everything because we're losing our jobs we're losing our businesses and all that shit and then the only outlet that we have is the rage on the internet like i was gone from facebook for like a day and i come back after the sixth and i don't like even the people that i was friends with before it seems like everybody was suddenly angrier and it was almost like it was a completely different platform like everybody's um an expert on what's happening in the world and nobody wants to actually have a conversation about it but the lockdowns like just built this powder keg that exploded and is just i don't know throwing shit all over the place now i I don't think it can be overstated the amount of like i cannot wait like listen i don't think you you should take Trump off, but I'm not going to defend him. Like he's gotten so many warnings. Like he's a big boy. He knew what he was doing. Sure. I, I mean, life is going to be better without him on these platforms. But I, I think you know, he, it, though? He, you know, it was entertaining. Uh, what are we really I, losing? We're losing mostly entertainment. Dan, I cannot <laughs> wait to never say the man's name again. <laughs> like I just, I'm so ready to move on and talk about. Like I've been planning out the next couple months of shows and like talking about policy and like you know fundamental principles like i'm so excited to get back to regular life but Mm -hmm. uh you know i think um well let let me ask this like how do you move forward now that you're kind of off of it now that you're kind of uh you know do do you how do you market your business like have you thought about that or, or or are you going i'll adapt i'll figure it out a little of column a and a little of column b Uh, Again, it's a little early to even know what's going to happen. I'm kind of just over the last 24 hours, even I've kind of been having a mind, a mental shift where I'm like seeing more of the silver linings, even more so like I'm I'm kind of a look on the bright side of things. I know it's weird for a conspiracy guy to say that, but uh, I don't push fear and stuff like that. I push, hey, explore and find truth, but don't live your life in fear of anything. Um but yeah, with this happening, it was kind of, I mean, it was definitely an eye opener and I had mixed emotions about it at the beginning. It was like, I'm angry. I'm sad. I literally lost 10 years of work that I poured into a platform that did not care about me. I'm sad about that. But at the same time, there's a silver lining of a fresh start and, uh, you know, doing having the kick in my ass to actually do a bunch of things that I had been saying I was going to do for the last few years and actually having the motivation to do it now that I've lost my mainstream of you know, information flow. So we're, uh, like I said, we're setting up our own social media. We're setting up a, um, well, we have a a newsletter that we're sending out uh, to just to make sure that we can keep in direct contact with our listeners and with our our friends, really. Like we all disagree on things, everybody in our group, but we've always been extremely civil. And I think they're all awesome people. And I want to be able to keep in touch with them and uh, continue doing what we do, which is changing the world one uncomfortable conversation at a time. Well, I think you've heard why I like Dan Smots, host of the System Is Down podcast, and why I have been a patron of his at patreon.com slash the system is down, why I'm going to rejoin, and I would ask everybody to go and support him in this moment and join his Patreon and help him build something uh, great outside of these, these social media uh, doom and gloom environments, and let's all watch what he's building with great interest and, and help support him and build something brand new. I mean, Dan, I, I wish you the best and I, I want to have you back because uh, my heart has been hardened towards people who would call themselves conspiracy theorists. I know that's a pejorative, yeah. um, but mine too. <laughs> I, I, right. Like I have to be honest. I feel like they made it, they made the last year harder and a lot of it felt like self-serving nonsense instead of open and honest questioning yeah. And and it's easy just to go, I don't want to listen to you anymore because you're not being rational. Like in and there's also the float, right? Like, you know, it's easy to go, all right, I'm looking at, at the name, the title of the latest system is down, and he must be in QAnon and he's pro Trump. And like, yep. you know, that nuance gets lost. So, so I want to look at ba- the fact that I got banned. Like I've had people, right. it's it, they're just going to assume, hey, he's a dangerous 
alt-right dude, obviously, because he got banned. It's like, no, actually, I no, you just go listen. You'll you'll find out. It's fine. Yeah. So <laughs> I encourage people to go check it out. And I'm I'm gonna have you back on and try to explain some of this stuff because I I want to understand why you see something different than I see, and even though we come from the very same place. So with that, I say thank you. Thank you for being here, Dan. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, man. I appreciate it. And thank you for listening to We We Are Libertarians. I'm going to do it for like the next 10 years. I've been doing it for the previous 10. It's never going to go away. Well, thank you for listening to The Chris Spangler Show, and we'll see you tomorrow.